guys, it's William O. Today on Disney Dude Interview, I have cosplay Disney bounding singer, gamer, Disney YouTuber, Leo Camacho. That's a mouthful. It is. <laughs> Hi, Leo. Uh, welcome hey, to the Disney Dude Interview. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, did I did I miss anything in that, that long intro? Uh, you missed professional ping pong player. Uh, I am a amateur spelunker. No, I'm just kidding. I, you got it all. <laughs> 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 I'm glad. Um, so, right off the bat, so how did you get into Disney? How did I get into Disney? Yeah, I, like I don't think I, I don't think I ever got into it. You know what I mean? Like I think, yeah. I think it was one of those things where it was just part of um, my uh, upbringing. Like my family was into Disney. Um, so, so my family's from Cuba, mm -hmm. which is, seems irrelevant, uh, but they came here and they just like soaked up that American culture, you know? Right. And so uh, Disney was like one of those things, right? They just, they kind of, um, they love Disneyland. They like the idea of it. And obviously Walt Disney internationally famous. And then, you know, they grew up with the movies and then I grew up with the movies because they collected the movies. And so it's just, it's just always been kind of part of my atmosphere. Part of your world? <laughs> part of my eco. Oh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, yeah. It was part of my world for sure. So... Why did you start a YouTube page and Instagram page? Well, actually, that's uh, that's kind of funny because it is Disney related. Um, so uh, after I had, so I'd filmed this Little Mermaid YouTube video with uh, Tracy Hines while I was Prince Eric, and uh, we became we became really good friends after that. Uh, and so we started working together. And then Tracy started filming a series called Hipster Mermaid, where I play Derek instead of Eric. <laughs> oh, I see and uh, yeah, and and we were at the beach filming episode one actually. And she was like, all right, everybody get in the shop for an Instagram picture. And I'm like, oh, you, you, it was relatively, I guess, you know, up and coming at the time. She's like, oh man, you got to get on there. It's like the hip new thing. And I was like, I don't know. And she goes, Leo, I'm telling you, like, this is perfect for you. Just get on Instagram. I was like, okay. So uh, I was like, well, you're in a mermaid tail. So I'm going to take a picture of you. And that's going to be my first Instagram picture. And, uh, and, and sure enough, I just got addicted to it. And that's actually where... Of all of my different pages, uh, my Instagram following is probably the strongest, uh, oddly enough. And so that's how, I, that's how I got into that. And, and originally, I wasn't even planning on it being Disney. It just seems to be that that's what resonates the most with the audience that tends to follow me. A, because they associate me with like The Little Mermaid and Tracy Hines and all this Disney um, culture. Um, but B, it's just, you know, really, really popular right now. Like Disney's so popular. So that is why I kind of stay in the Disney, uh, it, you know, sphere a little bit. Now, now when it comes to YouTube, I'd been doing, I had actually been hosting um, like streaming television shows about video game culture for a long, long time. Actually, video games is what I originally wanted to be known for and into the most. I used to do video game journalism and obviously I do video game art and I hosted shows about pop culture centered around video games, movies, and comics. Um, and along came Disney. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so it just sort of naturally shifted. And, and I try not to make all of my YouTube about Disney, although uh, it is certainly uh, Disney centric, but um, but yeah, that's kind of why it dominates my social media. Did you ever think you'd be this popular? <laughs> no. <laughs> no Are you me? Anybody? No. No, I don't think. Well, some people, Justin Bieber did, right? <laughs> like, he had an entire movie about him saying, like, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be famous. And that's why he's a little bit of a, you know, I, kind, of a, kind of a jerk face. Kind of a big jerk head. Thanks for giving PG. You know how we do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard you sweating over the microphone. You're like, oh, no, don't say it. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> so, what is your favorite video that you've made so far? <laughs> uh, well, for my channel or for others? Because, like, I'll be honest. Well, for my channel... Uh, my favorite video, um, it's kind of, that's, that's kind of hard. I, I really liked filming the Spider-Man video I did because my, uh, I'm not actually in the suit unless I'm singing, but my friend who has a similar body type put on my Spider-Man suit and was doing like parkour and backflips and stuff off of buildings. And so it was like so cool to go out in public and, and film him doing that sort of thing. Um, so that, that's probably my, that was my favorite video to make, but Darkwing Duck, my Darkwing Duck cover is probably my favorite video that I've done. I don't know. It's just something about that video. It was, it was my first time singing on camera, so I was super shy about it. Uh, and it was you rock. fun. Yeah, well, thanks, man. You know, I had to, you know, when there's trouble, they <laughs> double you, and then I rocked it. Uh, but uh, it was cool, like, pulling my friends together and arranging that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some kids actually confuse them <laughs> for Perry the Platypus. Oh, my gosh. I know, man. I went in that costume, that Darkwing Duck costume, to uh, Mickey's Halloween party. And people were like, Perry the Platypus! And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
You like are this. the fly on the windshield of justice, okay? <laughs> That's right, I am the wrong phone call at 3 a.m., okay? <laughs> <laughs> you are Darkwing Duck. Alright, so I know you explained this uh, many times before, but uh -huh. can you explain the difference once again between Disney oh. bounding and cosplaying? I'll explain it as many times as I need to. Oh, People shit. understand, man! <laughs> So Disney Bound and Cosplays. Um, cosplay is very distinctly wearing costuming, uh, costume clothing, in order to resemble characters, right? Like accurately, right? Well, accurate, as accurately as, as you can, uh, I mean, within, within reason. Um, but yes, it involves wearing wigs to mimic that character's hair and hair color, and uh, sometimes involves armor or clothing that is not natural to the year 2015 uh, or a reasonable number of decades near it so um, yeah you know it's just it's not normal clothing it's costume clothing it's very very particularly costume clothing and it's very obviously so Disney bounding is the complete opposite it's completely regular clothing that is modeled after styled after fashioned after and um, color matching sort of Disney characters so the idea is if you wouldn't wear it out to go to the grocery store, then you wouldn't, you know, then it's not Disney bounding type of thing, right? Like a wig, a wig is kind of where it blurs the line and people call it cause bounding now, that's like the term. Uh, but like a wig isn't normal unless you normally wear wigs, right? Or um, or like 14 belts, unless that's your style. Uh, but, um, you know, red pants is okay because they sell red pants in H&M, right? Um, a blue shirt is okay, but not plate mail. <laughs> you know, that's not right. exactly. You know, it's those kind. It's those kinds of differences. So it's it's subtle. It's supposed to be something that you, um, you know, you you would glance at somebody and say that they are embodying that character, as opposed to they are um, emulating that character perfectly. So, yeah, that's 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 the primary difference, I'd say. I gotcha. I, I, it, it's making more sense now. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's exactly right. So, okay. I watched your video about Big Hero 6 in the contest. Can you tell me mm. more about the Steam videos that you do for Disney? Yeah, so so Big Hero 6 was the first one. Um, so it's currently Steam video, but there will be more, and very soon, I'll tell you that much. But uh, essentially, that was a really cool program that I got looked into, and uh, so I work for a company called XPRIZE, and we do these competitions, incentivized competitions, where we offer large prize purses to solve global challenges. Um, so, for example, we have a $30 million competition to be the first robot on the moon, commercial robot on the moon, because governments have landed there before, but the private citizen has not. Uh, and so that's kind of what we decided to – so here's the – yeah, so this is this is sort of what we did. They're like, Leo, you're the Disney guy, and we have this awesome, you know, scientific – atmosphere here at work we do these great things uh we're trying to educate the the public but we really want to tap into kids and we want to inspire them to be the engineers of tomorrow uh and and to kind of start thinking about these technologies now because you know, their creativity is the strongest kind so how can we reach them right so we've been doing some education programs in robotics uh but they said since you're the disney guy why don't we pitch disney you know they've got this movie coming out big hero six uh, it was very early on in development when we first started talking um and they said yeah well why don't we pitch them they liked the pitch, uh, and they lumped Big Hero 6 in on that, and they said, develop a program around that. So we did. Uh, we came up with the Big Hero 6 XPRIZE Challenge, and the idea was um, we were asking kids to cr create a video that would um, show off some technology that they had invented, right, in any way that they could. Uh, and we had um, kids from all over the uh, was it world or country. I think it was actually only the country. We tried to make it global at first but it was just too cumbersome. We couldn't handle that in the time frame that we had, so we just made it national. But we had kids from all over the country submit their ideas, and they, they invent, like truly, truly invented these things. It wasn't hypothetical, it wasn't theoretical. Like they physically made everything that they were talking about. Um, and in the end, uh, we had a ton of submissions, but we chose six because the idea was we wanted the real life Big Hero 6, right? So we took three kids from the younger age bracket and three kids from the older age bracket. Um, and they, I mean, the things they come up with, man, would blow your mind. Uh, 3D, one of them was a 3D printed football that could pop open. Uh, and inside was a, a respiratory mask that you could lob into a second story window, a, window, a second story window as a first responder to fires. So, oh. uh, so yeah, so if there's a fire on the first floor and you're trapped in the second floor, by the time you realize that there's a fire, it's probably impossible for you to go out, right? You can't go down and out. 
Uh, and so you have to wait for the fire department to come up with a ladder and get you out. But as a result of that waiting, the majority of deaths that happen from fire are not actually from burning. It's from um, from smoke inhalation. They just die because they can't breathe. And so this kid came up with a mask that you could put inside of a 3D printed shell that he designed and 3D printed, and then took to different fire stations and tested on a mock setup that had a 75% accuracy rate. So they would lob the football inside, people could pop it open and put the mask on. And he actually invented it. And Disney, uh, there's e they're even talking about patenting it for him because it was just such an amazing design. But it was things like that. You know, they were creating greenhouses. They were creating um, uh, one girl had a windshield that would block out the sun in different ways so that you wouldn't have um, glare when you're driving at different times of day. So it's like really brilliant stuff. And, and Disney loved it so much that we've uh, we've signed a contract with them and we're doing more movies. And um, I can't tell you what the next one is, but I want you to use your imagination and think about the next movie that focuses around science, technology, and the world of tomorrow, possibly, and mm. uh, and uh, <laughs> and and think that there's something similar right around the corner. <laughs> nice subtle hint there. Like, oh, nice yeah. subtle hint. Yeah. So, I think it's really cool how you and Sarah. I'm going to bring her into this because sure, you, yeah. you, you two are an official Disney couple. <laughs> they go out yes. there. Disney News Series, he actually corrected me on this. I said right. unofficial, but it's official. It's official. It's official. We're, we're the Disney couple. <laughs> so what is your favorite thing to do with her while in the parks? Uh, well, uh, Disney Bound, you know. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, I mean, like, like Disney, like the whole process of Disney Bounding with her has been a blast because uh, it was uh, one of the first Disney sort of things that we did together. Actually, our first date was at Disneyland, ironically enough. Aww. But um, yeah, that's where we met, actually, for the first time was at Disneyland. Um, like, we had been talking, but then we just decided to meet up at Disneyland. And, Dreams you know. come true. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Disney Bounding has been fun because she suggested it. And I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. Um, but it's cool because, you know, like we prepare the costumes together, we plan it out, and then we go to the parks and it's fun, and then we do photo shoots, and it's fun to mess around with each other and find the spots and like get each other into poses, and we've learned so much about how we like to be photographed and like the best angles, and we break it down to like a science at this point, and it's always a lot of fun. Um, I'll leave the science to you, so, because you know. again, you know all about science. Um. That's right. <laughs> Leo Camacho, the science guy. He doesn't have a, the same ring as Bill Nye, the science guy, though. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, back to you. What What is your uh, all-time favorite ride? We'll, we'll, we'll go to each park because I know it's kind of hard. Uh, okay. Starting off with the original, Disneyland. What's your favorite thing? Ride? Haunted Mansion. Well, Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion is probably my favorite ride, but Jungle Cruise is a very, very close second. Um, I just really appreciate that ride. I was also a skipper for about a month once, so, uh, you know, it has a spot for me, but there's something okay. about Grim Grinning Ghosts that I'm really into. <laughs> what, okay, since you said Skipper, what is your favorite one-liner from the Jungle Cruise? Uh, man, that's a good one. Oh, oh, so there's this thing when you're when you're on the boat at night. Um, it's I don't I don't see anybody do it anymore. I don't know if you can do it anymore, but um, right as you're passing the Indiana Jones Temple, uh -huh. uh, you know you know how they look up and they're like, oh, look at all those. Beautiful, or they're like, look at those strange creatures or whatever, and they're the tourists or whatever. But in that area, there are these, there are these um, the boxes, like these crates, wooden crates hanging from ropes. Yeah. And on the box, um, they say danger, right? And so as you start, and it has to be at night because it's really dark. You turn the light off on the boat and you're cruising up and uh, you ask everybody in the boat, are you ready for excitement? And everybody goes, yeah. And they're like, are you ready to see some danger? And after everybody goes, yeah, then you just sign the light on the box and go, well, there it is. And it just says danger <laughs> on the box. <laughs> <laughs> that was always my favorite, but I, like nobody does it anymore. So I don't know if you are allowed anymore. <laughs> Am I laughing too hard on that part? Oh my goodness, that was... Uh, sorry, one of my favorite attractions is the Jungle Cruise. I'm like, the it's... jokes never get too old. Yeah, the cheesiness is so endearing. I love oh, it. It's amazing. Where is he? Danger? There it is. Oh, okay. There it is right there. Oh, great. Cool. <laughs> right, let's go to DCA. DCA, uh, Tower people, of Terror. Okay, for some people who don't know DCA, that's Disney California oh. Adventure. But anyway. The lingo, the jargon, the yeah. inside... The knowers. Um, yeah, I think it's Tower of Terror, probably. I think it's just such a, um, it's like such an encompassing ride. Like the whole, the atmosphere of it is really believable, right? Like you really get kind of wrapped up in, in that world and, and I really enjoy that. And I feel like you guys have more Easter eggs over there in uh, DC than we do in Orlando. Like yeah, but your ride is better. I've been on it over there, it's, it's better. 
Like you have an additional part of the ride that we don't have that is the most magical part of the ride. Oh, the like, fifth I dimension? Don't... No, uh, yes, the fifth dimension when you when you move out of the elevator. Yeah. And, you, and there's no track and it's just like, what? How are we? Yeah. 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 That's um, way better for sure. Okay. We talked about rides. What is your favorite park show? We'll, we'll go to both parks again. Um, uh, Magical Map for sure. Magical Map. Yeah, I'm a big Magical Map fan because, first of all, when it's hot, it's the shadiest place to be, and you never have to wait in line, so that's nice. Um, and then the show's just fun. Like, it's easy to get in and out, and it's just a good show. It's fun. The music's great, and uh, and also it was like a cool moment when I saw it for the first time, and uh, and it made an impact. So I just love seeing that show. We see it a lot. Are you having to see Stitch? They finally brought Stitch back? Yeah, they brought Stitch into it, and uh, actually, it's cool because the first time I saw the show, there was no Stitch, and I think I saw it like three times without him, and then or two two times, and then he came on. So I got to see both ways, and having Stitch is way better. What about DCA? DCA... Does it have many well, shows there? Yeah, they have Aladdin, uh, and that's a good show. Yeah. That's, like a, that's a great show, actually. Uh, but they also have World of Color, and... Uh, I'm sure they have a number of other ones, uh, but I guess Aladdin on that one. You I always thought that was that, good. Um, Calafina, whatever her name is, will be Goldberg played it. Uh, you know, you know, I never, I've never seen that. I only saw it on YouTube. And I'm I like, heard it, it existed, and I had no desire to go. <laughs> oh, they also have the Bugs Life show, but I never. I mean, I see it from time to time, but it's not my thing. I like it. Tell you, it's a TV bug. Yeah. Okay, so uh, those are fun questions, but here are some real fun Disney questions. What is your favorite movie? We'll go animated, live action, and Pixar. Because I feel like those are oh, three different cool. categories. Yeah, that's good. Uh, well, uh, animated is I always I always default to Aladdin. I I just think that's my favorite Disney movie um, because there's so many. I don't know. It was like the first hero that kind of you know I could um, I don't know sort of resonate. Yeah, I connected with him. He resonated with me, and and also I could, I felt like. I could be Aladdin, right? Uh, there's something to be you said. are now. Because... Well, now I literally am. I, I must have hit me psychologically deep, man. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. But I think that's that's probably my favorite Disney movie. Um, I mean, it's there's there's some close seconds in there, but that's probably number one for me. Okay. Robin Hood, Robin Hood's really up there for me, and so is um, I really like Lion King, obviously. But, but, and Little Mermaid's not so bad. <laughs> you're not you're, you are not a Disney fan if you don't like The Lion King. I'm just yeah, you are not a human being if you don't like The Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> you went far. <laughs> People not went. I'm but owning it. <laughs> live action. Live action? Uh, uh, man. I don't know. I guess I never really... Oh, oh, oh. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean is probably my favorite. Live action Disney movie. I've only seen... Uh, I'm a, I'm a really? Guy. Yeah. Oh man, because see, like, people give number two a hard time. Number three is horrific. I mean, it's truly an abomination of film. But number, number two is actually not that bad. And Davy Jones is one of my favorite cinematic villains of all time, because Bill Nighy just, I mean, he killed it. But uh, <laughs> I really, really enjoy that movie. But I guess, I guess Pirates is probably my favorite live action Disney movie. I would say, because I was like obsessed with Jack Sparrow, and I even cosplayed him. And and actually, when I started doing birthday parties, I did it. There was a short stint when I did birthday parties. Uh, I would do it as Jack. That's how I got into it. So it was fun. Um, and then Pixar. Pixar is Wally. Oh. Yeah. Wally. Oh. Yeah. Wow. yeah, I don't know. That movie's just so cool to me. It's just some something about it. How the know? first like hour, there's no talking, and you still yeah. Know what's going on. Yeah, it's that's the whole thing is that movie is truly an art piece to me, and that's why I enjoy it so much. And also Peter Gabriel's song in it is killer. I love oh, it. Oh, love that song. Okay, I think you already answered this question. Favorite Disney character is Aladdin. No, 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 no. not Aladdin. No, he, I love Aladdin, but my favorite Disney character is actually a tie between Dodger and Darkwing Duck. Those are my two favorite Disney characters. Oh, Dodger. Yeah, Dodger the dog. Oh my goodness. Okay, what is your favorite Disney song? Oh my god, I was literally having this conversation the other day, okay. and I always... Mm, what do you go to? Like my go answer, to? I think my default answer for this is probably Go the Distance. Oh, uh, I can go the distance. Yeah, man, that oh. song's so good, but there's just a lot of good ones. But I think Go the... Yeah, probably Go the Distance is my jam. Um, my jammy jam. It's <laughs> mine too. <laughs> Two Worlds is also it's a tie with with Go the Distance. You know, Two Worlds from um, Oh my goodness, Tarzan. Tarzan, yeah, yeah. Okay, those are my two. Those are my two jams. Two Worlds. Yeah, oh, man, I, I'm a big Phil Collins fan. <laughs> okay, uh, so if you could create your own ride or show, what would it be? Wow, 
Jesus. Um, it's hard. I know it's hard. I, I, if I could, time, well, you know, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Tell me your story. One time I got, uh, from another interview, uh, a Hercules ride. Mm, mm -hmm. And he said go the distance, so that was kind of fun. Anyway. That would be an inspiring ride. <laughs> yeah, it would be. When I was a kid, it's funny because this is actually becoming a reality. When I was a kid, oh, I have an answer for you. Anyway, okay. so when I was a kid, I always would sit with my neighbor who ended up becoming my best friend. Uh, the way we bonded was we would sit and go, wow, if, what if they turn Tomorrowland into like Star Wars land? And we sat and we would plan all the rides out. This is like pre-prequels, so there was no episode one, two, and three yet. And we planned like this whole theme park of like a section of Tomorrowland that was devoted to Star Wars. And that would always, I always wanted that to happen, but now I'm a little nervous about that happening because it's not the same brand that it used to be. Uh, but if I could design a ride, I, I've literally wasted an entire work day on Gchat talking to one of my friends about this. Um, <laughs> it would be, and I know, I know that they're building this in Hong Kong currently, but it would be a, it would be a Tron Legacy ride. Okay. Now, stay with me. It would be an indoor coaster, right? And it would right. be a racing coaster, like you would race uh, the cycles. other. Yeah, they would be light cycles, and you'd race, right? Uh, it would be like the kind you'd like strap into, and you know, just dangle. But it would be dark, kind of like the Aerosmith one. Uh, but but with light cycles and then as you're going like the different video game themes would be like around you so you'd go you know um, like through the legs of the uh, oh my gosh I'm totally blanking out what are those things called um, um, ah, you know what I'm talking about yeah Big I know what you're talking ships. about I'm just totally blanking out on what they're called but uh, yeah you do that and then you'd like be on different parts of the grid you'd be competing with the other cycles and they'd be zooming by you or uh, you know in the tank game you would just see them shoot you know kind of like a mixture I mean in in uh, Disneyland Paris, they have uh, the Space Mountain ride is yeah. um, indoors and it has like asteroids. So it would be a combination of that with Aerosmith and that would be like a Tron indoor fast coaster. I think that would be awesome. That would be my ride. I would ride it. Yeah. I, I would ride it. Thank uh, you. <laughs> good job. <laughs> All right. This is just a bonus. It's for, for my, myself and I think it's fun. Uh, I watched your impressions video and oh. would you be up to doing a speed round? If I name the character and you see the first thing that comes to your mind, I can try. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. Try. It's, it's fun. Uh, goofy. Oh, I, I don't have a Goofy. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. That's what I have. Mushu. Uh, Mushu. Uh, Mushu. Um. Eddie Murphy. Uh, yeah. This guy's got him scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> Dark... I'm so terrible at it. It's right. It's just Darkwing Duck. I am the terror that flaps in the night. <laughs> That's your best. Yoda. Mmm. Mmm. Chocolate bar. Mmm. I've never seen one of these. <laughs> <laughs> you know when he sees Luke's candy bar and he's like so impressed. Like, mmm. Mmm. Ooh, delicious. He's like loses his mind over a candy bar. <laughs> Chocolate bar it is. And then, yes. but there's two Yodas, because there's like, <laughs> oh, Yoda, take him to, take you to him, I will, right? And then there's like, once he stops playing around, he's like, he's like, no, he's not ready yet. You know, he gets like super yeah. serious and super dark. I'm like, I like that Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> the dark. Yeah, anyway. dark. Uh, Becky. Oh boy, maybe Master Yenz, it'll make me a map maker. Not bad, pal. Not bad at all. Um, oh, no, don't poop on the rug. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you just go there? Oh. So, and, and then Dopey. Dopey. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me, Leo. I, I, I messed up in your name. No, it's okay, because Leo, you Leo. know, it's got some swagger to hey, it. Hey, Leo. Oh, no, <laughs> no, it's been no, my no, pleasure, no. man. Thanks for having me on your show. <laughs> um, I hope we get to do this in the future, which we've been talking about. And, yeah, we will. Uh, we will. And how can the Disney Dudesters find you on social media? Disney Dudesters, you can follow me at Mr. Leo Zombie on everything. That's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, except Twitter. There's no Mr., so just Leo Zombie, at Leo Zombie. Yep. Less formal there. Okay. Yeah, you know, I went to get casual with the Twitter crowd. <laughs> Everyone tweets. else, it's Mr. Leo Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Leo Zombie. Well, actually, that's because Leo Zombie surprisingly was taken on everything else, and so I had to use, I had to do something. So I just put a Mr. before it. Hey, no. You know. Uh, you can stop by anytime, Leo. Really, 
Oh, so. thanks for having me. No, I, I'll take you up on that. I'll be an uninvited guest. <laughs> You'll be an uninvited guest. All right. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, okay? All right, man. Have a good night. <laughs>